Well, good morning, folks. Welcome back to the channel. My name's Lee, your virtual airline pilot, back with you again after a little bit of illness. Um, to the first of this week's reviews, it should have been last week. Um, I made a small mistake. I purchased the um, Joburg scenery from Anybuilds and end up ended up buying the Gaia Simulations version because it wasn't clear to me that the both versions were on Anybuilds site. In fact, it is, and it was my mistake. And um, anyway, so first of all, when we're looking at the Innibuilds version of Johannesburg International Airport in South Africa, Oliver R. Tambo Airport, Foxtrot Alpha Oscar Romeo, the payware scenery by Innibuilds, as opposed to the Gaia Simulations version, um, don't um, the Gaia Simulation versions came out in October last year. Um, this is the current new version from Innibuilds. This is version 1.0.1 .1 for the PC version of Flight Sim 2020. Any builds released a small update literally days ago, um, and you're looking at the current version with that update. The download comes in at 4.5 gigs and it installs at 7.44 gigabytes, so it's a pretty substantial scenery. But as you can see from this shot, I mean, the detail is quite incredible. There's an awful lot of work that's been put into this scenery to make it as close to the real thing as possible. And in a way, that completely overshadows the Gaia Simulations version, which was good, make no mistake, but uh, I had issues with their jetways, certainly in Flight Sim 2020. Um, but this one seems to be perfectly okay. We'll get to the jetways later on. So it's available from the Innibuild store. It's also available on Sim Market. It's not an awful lot of difference in the price. Slightly cheaper at Innibuilds um, when you look at the VAT, certainly for UK uh, customers. So, the Innibuilds price is £17.99, pence, which equates to roughly €21.59, or $23.55 US. Now, the US and the Euro prices are estimates taken from the UK pound, and they include tax or VAT at 20%, which of course can vary from the country of purchase wherever you happen to be. So, let's have a look at the list of features. So, here's the list of features. Many of them are common to any build sceneries, but they've got handmade ground textures with crisp bespoke texture sets, that includes runways, aprons, paths and roads. True to life airport landside recreation with custom ground decals, signposts, vegetation, parking barriers and much more. Accurately modelled and positioned dynamic airport lighting. Highly detailed models of all airport buildings, objects and surroundings. You've got up-to-date airport layout reflecting the scenery as it's currently in the real world. There's also an official GSX profile included and you can find it in the scenery folder if you're going to install it manually or if you've got any manager and you purchase the scenery you can install it directly from the any manager app. The level of detail or LOD is optimized for every model to encourage the best performance and they've used the latest Microsoft Flight Simulator software development kit features to allow for the best optimization and performance possible. You've got custom static aircraft, full any manager compatibility so you can configure the scenery for best performance on your system, bespoke taxi signage as it is in the real world. So there's a lot here. Um, I have noticed some vehicles going onto the runway. I'm hoping that they're not going right up and down the runway. But as you can see from a shot like this, I mean, it's a massive amount of detail and colouring, the way it's been edited into the, to the default area. Well, it looks pretty impressive just from here. So that was the features. Now let's talk some history. So history for you. Johannesburg, Oliver R. Tambo International Airport, Foxtrot Alpha Oscar Romeo, is an international airport owned and operated by the Airports Company of South Africa. It's situated in Kempton Park in the Guteng region of the Republic of South Africa. It serves as a primary airport for domestic and international travel to and from South Africa and since 2020 it's the Africa's second busiest airport with a capacity to handle up to 28 million passengers annually. The airport serves as main hub for South African Airways and handled over 21 million passengers in 2017. The airport was originally known as Jan Smuts International Airport, named after the former South African Prime Minister at the same name. 
The airport was renamed Johannesburg International Airport in 1994 when the newly elected African National Congress, or SANC, government implemented a policy of not naming airports after politicians. This policy was later reversed and in October 2006 the airport was renamed Oliver Reginald Tambo Airport after the anti-apartheid politician of the same name. The airport was founded in 1952 as Jan Smuts International, two years after Smuts' death near the town of Kempton Park on the East Rand. It replaced Pliampontein International Airport, which had handled flights since 1945. In 1943, a decision was made by the Cabinet of the Union of South Africa to construct three international airports with the Civil Airports Advisory Committee formed to investigate and report on the viability of this venture. That report was submitted to the Cabinet in March 1944 with one main international airport on the Witwatersrand and two smaller international airports at Cape Town and Durban. The South African Railways and Harbours Administration was given the role of managing the project and later, 1944, a member went to the United States to study standards and methods of construction. Four possible sites around Johannesburg were identified, with one south of Johannesburg chosen but soon discarded due to being situated on land with gold-bearing reefs below it. Sites were then narrowed down to Kempton Park and the existing airport at Palmyettefontein. Layouts and rough costing for the two sites were established and submitted for a ministerial decision. The site would be at Kempton Park. The area outside Kempton Park was an expropriated undulating dairy farm of 3,700 acres or so with a 598-acre eucalyptus plantation. Sitting on a plateau, the area sloped away from the east. The area was drained by the Blesbok River. The airport became operational on 1st of September 1953 and the new airport was officially opened by the Minister for Transport, Paul Sewer, on the 4th of October 1953, having taken eight years to build at a cost of around £6.2 million UK, or roughly £7.3 million US dollars. The airport was expected to manage 30 flights a day and over 200,000 passengers that year. Airlines using the airport and its opening were BOAC, Air France, KLM, South African Airways, Central African Airways, Qantas, El Al, SAS Group and DETA, or DETA. The airport was used as a testbed for Concorde during the 1970s to determine how the aircraft would perform while taking off and landing at high elevations, or hot and high testing as it was called. Following the ending of apartheid, the airport's name and that of other international airports in South Africa were changed and restrictions were lifted. With the creation of the Airports Company of South Africa, or the ACSA, in the mid-90s, a plan to commercialise the airport began with new passenger and retail airside facilities to handle a large number of aircraft com completing this phase in 2004. The airport overtook Cairo International Airport in 1996 as the busiest airport in Africa and is the fourth busiest airport in the Africa Middle East region after Dubai International Airport, Hamad International Airport and Abu Dhabi International Airports. In the year ending 2019 saw over 21 million passengers and over 200,000 aircraft movements at the airport that year. So there you go folks, a fairly extensive history. Um, the airport was changed um, considerably after apartheid ended in this country and now is the major airport in South Africa. Um, and we're here hoping the model um, looks just as good, and I'm sure it will. Certainly some of these shots you can see here, there's extensive detail in and around the airport that really kind of makes this a must win, I think, really. So that was history. Now let's look at the runway situation here. Okay, so runways at Johannesburg International. So Oliver R. Tambo International here in Johannesburg has two main runways. Runway 03 left to one right measures 14,505 feet or 4,421 meters in length and is made from asphalt. Runway 03 right to one left is the shorter of the two coming in 11,171 feet or 3,405 metres, and it's also constructed from asphalt. 
The airport lies at a high elevation of 5,558 feet, or 1,694 meters, and sits within the GMT UTC plus two hours of time zone. Now, unlike the UK, South Africa does not observe daylight saving time, or DST. And so here, late October, with the UK currently still on summer time, Johannesburg is still one hour ahead of the UK. So all four runways feature high-intensity runway lighting, high-intensity airfield lighting system version 2, centerline lighting, touchdown zone lighting, and precision approach path indicators on both sides of the runway. Now currently we're looking down 03 left, and here you can see the runway, you've got the high intensity lighting, there's the center line, there's the touchdown zone lighting, Pappy's on both sides, and you've got this approach lighting which again is on the charts, and all of the runways have it. So let's have a quick look at the other end, runway 21 right. So here we are looking at the other end, runway 21 right. And as per the uh, charts, and as per what I've just described, you've got the approach lighting here, centerline lighting, touchdown zone lighting, the high intensity airfield lighting, and the pappies on both sides. And here you can see there's an extended threshold as well. And these lights here, well, you've got everything you need for low visibility landings, and I'll tell you about the approach options in a moment. Let's have a look at 2-1 left next door. It's up here. So here we are looking at runway 21 left. Once again, you've got the uh, pappies on both sides, centerline lighting, touchdown zone lighting, everything here as per the charts, including the approach lighting. Let's go up the other end and have a look at 03 right. So here we are looking down the float of runway 03 right, and as per the other ends, all the other ends of the runways, approach lighting as per the chart. Pappies on both sides, high intensity lighting, center line, and touchdown zone. So everything here is required, everything is as per the charts. So all four runway ends also feature an instrument landing system certified to category two low visibility landings, which is why you have the approach lighting here and the touchdown zone lighting for low visibility operations. And all four ends feature this. So in addition, runway 03 right 21 left, which is the one we're looking at now, also has an RNAV GNSS approach option. And runway 21 right up there at the other end has a VOR, Y and Z approach option as well. So those are your options coming in. You've got instrument landing at all four runways, so no problems at all really. But if you fancy doing something different, then you've got a couple of other approach options should you need it. So that was the runways, all as per the charts. Congratulations, any builds, you've got it all correct. Which is quite rare, to be honest, um, not for any builds, but it's quite rare that many developers get all of the uh, navigational and lighting situations correct as regard the runways, but any builds have achieved it once again, which is excellent. So now let's do the jetway test. And what I've done is I've done two short tests, one on a domestic stand and one on an international stand where the jetways are slightly different, just to check they actually work. Okay, so here we are on stand Charlie 6. It's time to do the jetway test. Um, as you can see, the aircraft, my aircraft, the Airbus A320 Phoenix in the VAP air livery, we've spawned directly from the menu and we've gone right onto a stand marker, which looks pretty good from here. Um, so let's connect the jetway, see how it works. So the jetway head has turned, everything's moving, doors opening, aircraft there. And the stairs have moved, but they haven't gone into the concrete, which is really good. That from here looks to be a good connection. Let's get a closer look. So from here, that looks pretty good. It doesn't appear that the hood has gone through the aircraft, and it's right up to the aircraft um, skin at the bottom too. That looks, that looks pretty good. Let's have a look from the other side. So once again, that looks pretty good. The only thing I can see is that there's a gap here. Um, that you can see inside the head, so that the, the hood is there, but it's not connected to anything. But um, that's a minor detail. The connection appears to be quite good. Let's go inside here and see what it's like. So here we are inside, and as you can see, this is probably one of the better connections. The uh, jetway floor here is right up to the aircraft side, as indeed it should be. 
The hood at the top doesn't appear to have gone through the aircraft, which is really good, and the sides look pretty okay as well. And here you can see the door isn't infringed at all. Let's look out from the inside of the doorway. So here from inside the aircraft you can see out there there's the floorway and you've got the uh, main doors of the jetway end there, which look pretty good. Here's a quick view from further inside. You can see the jetway hasn't gone through the skin of the aircraft from here. And looking through the cockpit there, you can see no invasion of the aircraft hood at all has gone into the cockpit. In fact, there we can see it just touching close to the screen. So this is probably one of the best connections um, that we've seen. So that's the only anomaly, the fact that the hood isn't actually connected to anything. But in terms of a jetway, you know, it works. The aircraft has spawned correctly onto the centre line of the stand at the right point and the jetway is connected with no real issue. OK, it's gone through slightly here, but it's not something you're going to see and it's nothing that's going to affect your passengers, especially those of you using GSX. Here's a quick look at the jetway itself. Nicely weathered, I mean, it looks great. And they have this particular type of ground wheel, so when the jetway connects, it doesn't actually go into the concrete. It just moves along the top, which is great, and that's really, really good. OK, so let's disconnect the jetway. So the hood springs back, there's a delay, and the jetway moves. Notice how the uh, stairway moves along the ground, doesn't go into the concrete, even though the jetway does actually rise up a bit and rise and drop down a bit when it connects. That's really good. Quite impressive with that. OK, so just very quickly, I've switched now to the international side. This is Stand Alpha 8. Again, we put the Airbus 8 directly from the menu, and it would appear that it's gone onto the centre line in the right position. These jetways, as you can see, are a little bit longer, um, and they move further. So I just really wanted to test this and see if it works as well as the other one we've tested. Note again, we've got little wheels at the bottom here, so it'll be interesting to see what the stairs do. Anyway, let's connect the jetway. So the jetway moves quite nicely at the right speed, the wheels are turning, stairs aren't going into the concrete at all at the moment. So we've lowered a little. This looks to be pretty good. Okay, Ebus has slightly gone through the skin there, but actually the jetway's connected, the stairs have moved correctly without going into the concrete, and the wheels have turned as indeed as they should. Let's have a close look. So no problems with the connection, as you can see also the aircraft has spawned from the menu directly on the centre line here onto position 4. This is the Airbus A320 again. OK, so this the, uh, the hood has gone through the skin this time, but, um, you know, it's, it's no big deal. The jetway's connected properly. Let's look from the other side. And that looks all pretty good. Again, you can see the, jet, the hood has gone through the skin, but I'm not really complaining this time. The jetway's a good thorough connection. And again, the condition of the jetway is just as you'd expect it. You can see the rust marks here. Uh, the gap that we saw on the other jetway is not here. This is perfectly acceptable. It's perfectly OK. Let's pop inside here. OK, so here looking inside, once again, the jetway is connected pretty nicely. It's almost up to the lip of the floor here, just as it should be. The door hasn't been infringed in any way by the hood or the side of the jetway. Looks pretty good there. And looks pretty good there. Quick look from inside the doorway. They're looking out from inside the aircraft. There are the main doors to the jetway. All perfectly acceptable there. So here, just quickly, you can see the hood has gone through the skin there. And once again, you can see the hood has gone through the skin of the flight deck. But these are minor issues. To be honest, the connection is perfectly acceptable. Your passengers are going to walk on and off perfectly OK. So let's just disconnect it. Hood springs back, my door closes. Well, let's see if the jetway returns to the proper position. Once again, the wheels are moving as they should. Stairway is not going into the concrete. No infringement of the engine or the wing at all. And it looks like it's going back into the safe area. And there you are. So you've got two jetways there. I've tested the, the one on the domestic side and here on the international side, and they all seem to be working, working perfectly OK. So that was the jetway test done. 
let's get down and have a close look at this airport now, see how good it is. And, um, yeah, see if it's any better than the Gaia simulations. I'm suspecting it's going to be. It's a newer model, a newer version, um, with much more detail added. Um, looking forward to have a close look at the scenery. Okay, folks, welcome back. It's just after 1 p.m. local time here. Um, we're going to start a tour, basically south to north going airside as well. There's an awful lot in this scenery. Um, quite a bit that's been done. There's also quite a bit that it, that's been left out. In many ways it's a huge ghost town. But uh, we'll come to that. What I do like about this is the detail that's been put into it and the work and the way that it fits in with the rest of the terrain and the rest of the uh, modelling around it. So let's start going south to north. As you can see this is some of the default stuff on the southern end, crossing the highway. We have the fuel farm in front of us. Lots of photo scenery and photo ground, which actually isn't too bad, kind of works in a way. So there to the left is Apron M. I've actually got the map open to the right on the other screen so I can see. And here you've got um, various hangars and uh, bits and pieces here. Well, it all looks pretty good. To be honest, I spent an hour or so looking over this before we got this close. Um, and there's a lot to see. It is a really good scenery. So, apron C there. And here are the Alpha Gates below us. Um, the ground looks really good. There's some internal development, mostly, in fact, it's all airside, but there doesn't seem to be any people. We'll have a look at that in a bit. But as you can see, the ground textures and modelling are excellent. Oh, it looks pretty real enough. And you've got various hotels and stuff. Now here you've got, we're coming up towards the cargo area on the northern end. So you cargo guys are well catered for here. Get another nice hotel there, landside. All of the buildings are nicely textured and weathered. Um, and there's quite a bit of detail. And I think it looks pretty good, to be honest. So just a quick look at some of the taxiway signage. There's a helicopter pad to the right-hand side there. We're on Alpha. And there you've got signs sort of denoting the apron. And here we're approaching uh, runway 21 right. Again, you've got the signage that's required. And the ground markings are excellent. The concrete looks pretty good too, to be honest. Blue airfield edge lights. And there as we cross to the other side, the taxiway on the other side. Okay, so let's get down to the ramp and have a look at the airside area, which is what you pilots would be interested in. Here we are on Apron C. This is my Airbus A320, the Phoenix version. Sitting here on, um, on Stand Charlie 4. And as you can see, the, I mean, the ground is great. We've got a little bit of mismatching here. This isn't quite straight. Um, this may be my graphics card. It may not be the ground itself. But it all looks pretty impressive. So here's the view from the flight deck. As I said, it's around about quarter past one in the afternoon local time. And uh, this is the view you'll be met with when you park up during the daytime. There's a view from the captain's side, and there you can see the doorways on the stand. I mean, this all looks pretty real. It's pretty good, to be honest. And there we are looking through the first officer's side. 
So as you can see, the ground detail is pretty decent. Um, you've got all the markings you need. I mean, this is well weathered, to be honest. Here you've got um, um, a fuel bowser connection. And you've got signage and weathering on the jetways as well, which is good. And there we are looking west. There you can see the um, stand ground parking numbers and everything. Um, there's a sort of a, a, an FSLTL aircraft over there. And you've got um, additional hangars there, up there to the left. There we are looking south, that's towards the runway. And um, you go along at an apron alpha here. So this is the domestic terminal here. There's no internal modelling airside that I can see. Let's just have a quick look. So nothing there from the outside. And as you can see, the structure is there, but there's no internal modelling here. While we're here, let's have a quick look landside. As you can see, 3D roads, various cars, um, unfortunately no people. And no cars in the car park either. And there we are looking in the other direction. So from landside, just looking down here, look, you can see the modelling has been done. Okay, the cars don't quite work really. But the roads are all 3D, they've all been nicely done. You've got road signs and uh, various hotels and buildings that are all part of this area. So road signage looks good. There's the Southern Sun building. And there's a quick view of the central area. Um, we've got a, the top of the multi-story car park, it's got cars on it. Um, this is all a bit um, sort of like three, um, almost 3D down here, we'll have a look in a minute. And you've got various roads around here. There's a railway track that goes right the way out there, there's a station. Unfortunately no animated train, would have been nice to see an animated train on there. So you've got a City Lodge Hotel there. And here's a look land side of the airport terminal. Again, a few cars, taxis here and there, no people at all. It's all a bit um, ghost-like, as it were. But modelling is excellent. Everything's the, the detail in the buildings, I've got no complaints about. It's wonderful. Even down to the air conditioning systems and the stairwell that you can see there. There's another little hotel, complete with flags which are not animated. But uh, yeah, you know, it looks fine. It looks really good. So let's cross back airside, you can see, I mean, there's a huge amount of detail. And weathering and texturing all looks pretty good. It looks really nice. It's a big improvement over the Gaia Simulation ones. I mean, you've, you've got the choice. Um, but uh, th this is excellent, this is really good. Okay, so this is Apron E on the northern part of the terminal complex. And as you can see for the windows here, there is internal development here, airside. So we'll just pop in and have a quick look. And there you go. I mean, it looks great. It really does. Signage is good and clear, even close up. And there you can see down the corridor, I mean, the, all, all of the signage, even the um, signboards at the top there are all clear as well. And you've got gate rooms there, the toilets there, you've got the computers. And there we are looking in the other direction. The only thing that's lacking is people. We've got no people, no staff and no people waiting. But uh, other than that, there you go, it's fine. So once again at the Alpha Gate here you've got these um, little airside lounges, we'll go inside, there are there is development in here. And once again it's been nicely done, the uh, shops there are photo real images of a high resolution so they look pretty good. And there we are looking down the corridor. And they're in the other direction as well. All really nicely done, very clear. Um, it just, it looks great. The only thing that's lacking is we've got no people, no passengers, no staff, which is a pity. It's a bit of a dead airport. 
So we'll run quickly across the main runways to the east. Here is the control tower complex. As you can see the ground looks pretty impressive. It's all been really nicely done to be honest. Here's the main control tower coming up. We've got the radar dome on the top that's turning. And here we are inside. Once again, a really nicely done internal part of the control tower here. But no people, no controllers. There's another view looking back across the airport. So just looking further east of the control tower complex there to the right, you've also got another tower here. Um, the secondary tower. Again, some nice modelling, no real complaints here, it's really lovely. And once again, you've got internal modelling. I like the stairway there. Once again, a nicely done internal part of the tower here. Everything you need to control um, the screens, it all looks really good. It's just have no controllers, unfortunately. So we travel further north along the ramp here, adjacent to uh, runway uh, 03 right, 21 left. This is the cargo area coming up, as you can see, plenty of space, parking spaces for aircraft, and um, all been nicely modelled here. Got a hotel there to the left land side, and various buildings, all nicely weathered and textured little bit of development land side there's the FedEx building down there to the left and as you see more stands up here and your helicopter pads okay so that was a brief look at things during the day um, as you can see, it, it's been well developed. It, it is, I, th I would say, it's more developed than the Gaia simulation version. Um, there is a, a real lack of um, people and things to sort of bring the airport to life. But n notwithstanding that, the detail around the airport is excellent. If you all you want to do is fly in here and fly out and taxi around and just get the right sort of views looking out of your cockpit, then um, this this is for you. This certainly is excellent. Would be nice to see an animated train on that track up here, because they've modelled the station as well. However, there it is. Um, let's draw the lighting now to dusk and see what the lighting is like. Okay, quarter past six in the evening local time. It's uh, late October 2024. Obviously, we're in the southern hemisphere, so it's all a bit different here. Lights came on just a couple of minutes ago, and here's what it looks like from high level. And that looks pretty good. All of the lighting looks okay. I don't see any abnormal or um, weird lighting anywhere. It all looks pretty impressive, certainly from here. Blue air for edge lights, green centerline lights for taxiing around. So you should be able to find your way. That's pretty good. So there's the view looking north. This is runway 21 right up here. Cargo area. Quick look to the east, there's the control tower complex in the distance there. And to the south. So we go in towards the terminal complex there, you can see the signage looks pretty impressive as well. The light stands look okay. We'll start by looking at some um, apron C here where my aircraft is. I, I like the lighting here, it looks really quite quaint. A little bit of juddering here, probably the amount of detail, but it really does look pretty good. So let's just go land side and have a look at the, the roads and the land side system here. So some nice lighting here too. 
again I don't see any of Sobo globes it's all pretty straightforward okay I only have cars on the roof there nowhere else but um, there you go but again um, no Sobo globes floating around lighting provided by the correct um, light sources Here's the railway, as I said, it's a pity um, they haven't got an animated train. They've they modelled this all really nice, but no train. So there's the train station at the terminal end, as we approach the terminal from landside. And the station is modelled, not to a high degree as such, but it's modelled there. There you've got the Hotel Intercontinental. And landside looks pretty reasonable too. It's just a the lack of people, you go to this detail, this amount of detail looks brilliant but no people, even statics so we cross back to airside on the eastern side of the term, main terminal, the international terminal again you've got these great big um, light sources providing the right amount of light so you have a close look at the stands here um, certainly where you've got airside parking here and you've got airside internal development. You know, that looks pretty nice from the outside. Also notice the um, jetways here are lit, which I think is a great thing. I love to see this on these on, in, in sceneries because it's, it's just good. So just a little tour along the apron here and you can see, I mean, it looks great. It really does. Lots of parking space. And as you've seen, the jetways all work nicely as well. So as we approach Apron Echo, or Apron E, whatever you want to call it there. Again, we've got a um, little airside development here. And again, some nice lighting on the jetways as well and on the terminal building. And I, th I think the lighting has been really well done. It, it looks great. And a quick look at some of the taxiway signage. As you can see, we've got green center line lights, which is excellent. And the ground signage boards look pretty good too. It's great, it's just nice. Really pleased with it. So as usual, quick look from the flight deck, this is what you'll see at dusk. It's 20 past 6 in the evening. This is the view from the front out of the window here. And a look out at the captain's side there, you can see the lighting on the end of the jetway, which I think makes all the difference. And the first officer's side for you. So there you can see we're looking up across the cargo area, which is also well lit. Really no problems at all with this here. And here's the uh, motorway land side as well, and you can see various buildings that are lit as well there too. Just a view of one or two of the buildings that have been added into the scenery. Looks pretty good here. This is the uh, Fremont Hotel. And here's something else that caught my eye when I was having a look. Here's the Emperor's Palace. Um, just land side of the terminal complex. Some nice palm trees down there. Uh, the road's been done, although not entirely. But uh, no, it looks, it looks good. Here's the fuel farm in the distance located on the southern side. And you've got Apron M further along there. And finally, there's a high level shot looking north. So as the sun disappears, um, you can see that the, the dust lighting looks really good. I like the airport and the way it's been lit. Let's drop it down to night time now. 
Okay, 10 p.m. local time. As you can see, the lighting has come up a bit, and we're now in the depths of darkness, as it were. You have the same amount of lighting that's come up a little bit more, but uh, getting around on the airfield here at night's not really going to be a problem. As you can see, taxiways are lit. The apron areas are lit right from the um, center line here. And there we are looking north. The cargo area also is fully lit, as you can see here in the distance. Um, you continue to see hotels and various bits and pieces with nice bespoke lighting on them, which I think is good. There's a control tower complex in the distance, and below us you can see the various signs on the taxiways. Again, all nicely brit light, all nicely lit and bright for you. And then looking south, Apron M is the furthest area in the distance there, and you've got various buildings. Some of this drop-down lighting looks really nice. It's quite effective, especially in, in, in many sceneries it looks really good, the way it's been done. So here's my aircraft on the uh, Stan Charlie 4. Um, the ramp lighting is fine. The terminal looks a bit dead and dull, unfortunately. Okay, you've got reflections here off the glass. This looks better in the daytime and at dusk. At night time it just looks totally bland. And that's what it looks like from the flight deck. Um, you know, I mean, you've got these nice reflections here which look pretty realistic. And the bottom here by the road is done really well, but the glass itself, I mean, the terminal looks, the whole place looks a bit dead, unfortunately. But as you can see, looking west on apron, on this apron C, I mean you've got lots of lighting. It's all as it should be. There's not really going to be any problems taxi around or parking around. It, you know, it's it's nice. It really is nice. It just looks a bit ghostlish, or ghostly as it were. And looking southeast, there's the taxiway goes out there to the end. So just a quick pass over the terminal area central area land side here at night as you can see lots of subtle dynamic lighting looks really quite good buildings are well lit the hotels are nicely lit as well and they've even lit up part of the um, railway station that really is crying out for an animated train as we pass over various hotel complexes oh, it looks good it really does look nice Lighting everywhere it's needed. And it's really difficult to see what's been added landside and what's part of the default. I mean, the whole thing looks... This area looks pretty good. Whatever way you look at it, it looks great. So on the northeast side of 03 right, you've got this um, complex here. Various aviation buildings belonging to Safe Air, FedEx Air, Salenta Aviation, Airlink and Anglo-American. Various um, buildings and uh, hangars and construction areas up here as well. And there in the far left corner you can see the lighting here on cargo. So we'll have a little look here, and here you can see they've got tungsten lighting which gives you this yellow effect on the on the, the ramp area. Parking spaces here directly in front of the areas where the vehicles would come out and deliver the cargo to the aircraft. And there we are looking back across the uh, airside ramp area. Here's one of the hotels, some nice lighting on it too. On the whole, lighting's been done really well for dusk and night time. Okay, so that was a quick look at night time. Let's bring up the dawn and see what it looks like. Okay, 5.35 in the morning. Um, the lights went out just oh, two or three minutes ago. And here we are looking at the main terminal complex. Apron A and B. And uh, this is what it looks like at dawn. You've got this glow on the buildings which looks really good. There we are looking towards the threshold of 03 right, and you've got the um, maintenance hangars and various bits and pieces down here. Apron M is the furthest area there. And then looking north is the cargo area here. 
And then looking out to the southeast, here's the control car complex here. And you've got Danell and Fireblade Aviation various bits and pieces here on the other side of zero th of, um, <coughs> two one left. Okay, seven minutes past six in the morning. Time to give you my re my uh, thoughts and wrap up this review. Firstly, let me apologise for my voice. Something I should have done a lot of, at the beginning of this uh, video. Um, I'm suffering a bit with a chest infection, but um, we're managing it. I wanted to get this video out today. Um, we've got one more to do before the week is out. Um, let me talk about this now. Okay, um, you now have two choices for Joburg in terms of payware scenery. You've got the Gaia Simulations version, which is perfectly okay. It's about two years old now. And this is the latest um, version by Anybuilds. Now, as I said earlier on, I made the mistake of purchasing the Gaia Simulations one in order to review the Anybuilds and got the wrong one. But that's now been corrected and you are now looking at the Anybuilds, the latest version update 1.1. Um, I like it. I really do like it. It's a big improvement over the Gaia Simulations. The modelling is excellent. It's typical of what we expect from any builds, both inside and outside. The lighting is wonderful. Signage on the ground, both land side and air side, and out on the ramp is really good. And they've added a few bits and pieces, and the whole area looks pretty real. It certainly fits into the default terrain. Flying in here could be really nice in terms of the visuals, what you might see from the cockpit or out over the wing. You make some good videos from this. Um, the, what's the downside? The big thing that's crying out for me, the two things that are crying out. One, you've got this wonderful railroad track here that goes into the airport. Both stations are modelled. The airport station here and the intermediate station are really nicely modelled, but there's no train. I'd like to see an animated train there, and I'd like to see it lit as well during the darkness hours. That's one. The other big showstopper for me um, is that there are no people. They've modelled inside airside only. I accept that. That's okay. They didn't want to do the rest of it. But you've got airside here, inside that's been modelled. And also in these areas here, they've done really, really nice. But it's just dead. There's no people. It's it's so ghostly, it's, it's ridiculous. And now we have um, people models, beautiful um, detailed models that really don't have any, hardly any hit on the frame rate at all that could be placed inside, even as static ones. Um, and they're available to be used and they really can make, an, uh, make a difference. Landside is okay. It's not the best in the world. They've put flags but they're not animated. They've made the roads all 3D. Mark, some of the markings are missing. Some of the have got cars there. But again, you've got no people stood out landside waiting to go into the terminal. And I think it wouldn't take a lot of extra work to do this to be honest. I mean, I don't know. You, 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 they built the scenery. All you've got to do is put a few people in it. But that's, those are the two things, the criticisms for me. The lack of the animated train on this wonderful track and stations they've created. Um, and the lack of people. And there's not even any sort of, uh, you know, ramp staff about, okay, got one or two where my aircraft was parked. But, uh, you know, aside from that, this is a good scenery. It sits really well where it is in the in the default terrain. And default's pretty good. I mean, it's photo scenery here, which looks really good. And it fits nicely into it, and it could be a nice place to land. Remember, if this is getting on for 6,000 feet above sea level, so you guys are going to have to be careful coming in here. But there's enough here to keep the pilots happy, um, and enough for you to sort of have a look around and explore think it looks really good. So there you are folks, it's Johannesburg, Oliver Richard Tambo International Airport in the Republic of South Africa, Foxtrot Alpha Oscar Romeo. It's a payware scenery, this is the version, the latest version by Anybuilds, and it's version 1.1 for the PC version of Flight Sim 2020. It's a fairly reasonable download coming in at 4.5 gigabytes and it installs at 7.44 gigs, so it's quite substantial installation. You get it from the Anybuild store and from Sim Market. Not an awful lot of difference in the price, but it's a slightly cheaper at Anybuilds. And I'll give you the Anybuilds price. £17.99 UK, which equates to €21.59, or $23.55 US. 
the US and Euro prices are estimates taken from the UK pound and they include tax or VAT at 20%. Now, of course, that could vary if you're buying this in dollars from the US. Um, so obviously, depending on which country you're in will depend on how much tax is added to the actual um, cost. But the prices are pretty good. Any bills prices are always very competitive and the sceneries are always well done. It's a pleasure to look at them and to review them when I get the chance. So there you are folks, um, a, a quick and um, hopefully useful review of the latest from um, any build to Johannesburg Airport, another huge airport project here in South Africa. Um, I hope this review has helped, my apologies for getting some of these videos out late, I normally do two, sometimes three a week, but um, life has been happening lately and I've not been too well. But uh, on the up and hopefully we'll get back, I've got some lovely sceneries coming to, to, to review. Um, later this week, hopefully, we're going to look at Riyadh in Saudi Arabia, another really nice scenery. I'm going to have a close look also at Geneva by Jetstream Jet Designs. So um, many more sceneries to reviews to come. So thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting me and continuing to stay um, with this channel, despite um, the fact that I've not been pulling a lot of stuff out lately. Um, thank you very much for your help. Um, if you guys are interested in helping support me, I have a buy me a coffee, um, which you can uh, you buy me a coffee, it's really cheap, it's a couple of quid, um, but it helps towards the costs um, of the scenery, some of which I buy and some of which very kindly are sent to me. I purchased this one by the way, um, so there we go, so if you feel like I'm helping and supporting the channel, um, that would be nice. So this is Lee, your virtual airline pilot, slowly recovering from more illness and rubbish. Um, saying thank you for watching, thanks for joining and, and looking at this. And I'll see you in the next video very soon. So take care, fly safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.